Only Lucy Letby is aware of the motivations for her killing and assaulting newborn babies under her care. Nothing in her upbringing or history, nor any possible cause of her June 2015 killing spree, was discovered by police. Evidence that she relished the drama of the emergency when children collapsed, grew active and delighted when the kids died, and texted her co-workers as soon as something unexpected and terrible occurred during her shift, suggested that she was savoring the attention, they claimed. Letby had a psychological evaluation and was found to be competent to face trial. But a renowned criminologist told the Mail that Letby's desire to be in the spotlight may be a sign of the mental illness Menchausen syndrome. Detective Superintendent Paul Hughes, who oversaw the investigation for the Cheshire Police, said he thought Letby's confession note was the only way to explain why she became Britain's most prolific child murderer in recent times in the lack of a clear motive. She obviously enjoys the spotlight and a trial must have given her even more of it, according to DSQs. But if we're trying to figure out why she did it, to use her own words again, she is evil and she did this. If we're seeking a reason, she didn't tell us, but she did record it in that note. After she was detained in July 2018, police searched her house and found the green post-it note in her journal. The message said, not good enough. In addition to writing in capital letters, I am evil, I did this. Let be also scribbled, there are no words. I suffer every day as a result of the horrible person I am. My airway is closed. I have trouble concentrating. Kill me immediately, please. Overwhelming terror or dread. I won't ever get married or have kids. I'll never have a family. Therefore I'll never understand it. No chance. I've done nothing wrong, I assure you. Forget defamation throughout the police inquiry. Victimization and discrimination. Everything is becoming too much and taking over my life. I really hate what this has done to me. I fear being completely alone. What the future may bring. How do I overcome it? How can things ever return to how they were? Abuse, panic, fear, and lost. I'm not worthy of living. I took action. Why me? I killed them on purpose because I am a nasty, evil person and I am not good enough for them. Mum and dad don't deserve me. The world would be better off without me. Let me insisted that the message was not a confession and that she wrote it in July 2016, after leaving the unit, because she was having trouble accepting responsibility for something she hadn't done. However, the prosecution encouraged the jury to interpret it literally and Mr. Hughes stated that in his opinion, let me left the message on purpose for police to locate. He said that by May 2017, she was aware that police were looking into the matter, and despite having a shredder at her Chester house, she didn't get rid of the message or the nurse handover sheets and medical records that were discovered stowed beneath her bed. She wrote it down, in my opinion, and left it for us to find, Mr. Hugh stated, she was aware that the police were looking into the matter and that because she had relocated, she was now a community suspect rather than a criminal suspect. She was aware that the cops had spoken with some of her co-workers. In May 2017, it was reported in the media that Cheshire police were looking into the causes of newborn deaths. She put it down either carelessly or purposely since she knew we would talk to her at some time. Mr. Hughes asserted that Letby was not a simpleton and questioned whether she may have left the notes in an effort to gain notoriety. She is clever and eloquent, scored well on her nursing exams, and was proficient in her field when she set out to do it well, he said. You could tell by the way she recorded information in her hospital records. Additionally, her cleverness was evident from the manner she purposefully mislead physicians in her hospital papers. To be able to purposefully deceive smart physicians and colleagues into thinking that a youngster was on the verge of collapsing. Did she want the note to be discovered? Did she just want to record it or did she wish to reveal to the world that she was terrible and committed this crime? Did she seek the fame she has attained? The reason was there for us to discover, but they didn't tell us why.
I don't think she went into nursing to murder children. But nursing provided her the opportunity to be among the most vulnerable in society. Mr. Hughes said when asked whether he felt Letby became a nurse to kill or if the job allowed her the possibility to become a killer. She was inspired to continue once she witnessed what had occurred and the attention she had attracted. According to criminologist David Wilson, Letby's desire to be in the middle of a crisis was a sign that he may have Munchausen syndrome. He remarked, she is inducing a form of Munchausen's crisis around her. Extraordinary tales about what occurs when she is working are being shared. Look at all the things that happen while I'm around. She is saying, other than having the opportunity, Mr. Hughes said it was unknown why Letby had singled out certain kids. She may have been alone with them as their designated nurse. Or their parents may have briefly gone somewhere to get some rest or food. However, he said that once she had chosen a victim, she had made up her mind to hurt and murder them. The same kids were harmed repeatedly. Some patients perished, while others could only be saved after being transferred to another hospital. She returns to the same victim after deciding to assault them, he claimed. When she is picked, she is determined to do her hardest to murder them until she succeeds or until something happens to stop her. She's in charge. Once she's made a decision, if the result is not what she wants, she will try again and again. Which gets us back to the fact that she is controlling and manipulative. She was a monster, the officer said, who not only killed her helpless victims but also made them suffer. I can think of nothing worse. So monster fits, Mr. Hughes said. DCI it was really hard and difficult. According to Nicola Evans, the case's deputy senior investigating officer, to be unable to explain to the parents of Letby's victims why she had assaulted their infants. DCI Evans said, I couldn't pinpoint what her motivation was, and ultimately, only Lucy Letby can answer that. She has repeatedly denied the charges while given the chance throughout the trial and in her interviews. I think she will keep denying them so we might never learn the truth. Our goal was to explain what occurred to the families. But one thing we haven't been able to do is explain why. That is really challenging to do as a police officer. On a human level, everyone attempts to understand why and speculates that the atrocities must be the result of something in her past or that has occurred to her. But the fact that we haven't discovered anything that would indicate a cause for this makes it all the more startling. In my opinion, I'm not sure anything explains these crimes, and I'm not sure we could have found anything that would lead me to understand why she did it because it's so unimaginable, the investigator said. According to criminologist Dr. David Wilson, Munchausen's condition is manifested in Letby's urge to be in the epicenter of a catastrophe. He remarked, She is inducing a form of Munchausen's crisis around her. Extraordinary tales about what occurs when she is working are being shared. Look at all the things that happen while I'm around. She is saying, other than having the opportunity, Mr. Hughes said it was unknown why Letby had singled out or targeted certain kids. She may have been alone with them as their designated nurse. Or their parents may have briefly gone somewhere to get some rest or food. However, he said that once she had chosen a victim, she had made up her mind to hurt and murder them. The same kids were harmed repeatedly. Some people perished, while others could only be saved after being transferred to another hospital. She returns to the same victim after deciding to assault them, he claimed. When she is picked, she is determined to do her hardest to murder them until she succeeds or until something happens to stop her. She is in charge. Once she's made a decision, if the result is not what she wants, she will try again and again. Which gets us back to the fact that she is controlling and manipulative. She was a monster, the officer said, who not only killed her helpless victims but also made them suffer. I can think of nothing worse. So monster fits, Mr. Hughes said. It was really hard and difficult. According to Detective Chief Inspector Nicola Evans, the case's deputy senior investigating officer, 
to be unable to explain to the parents of Letby's victims why she had assaulted their infants. Mrs. Evans remarked, I couldn't pin down what her motivation was. And ultimately only Lucy Letby can answer that. She's had the chance during the trial and her interviews, and she has consistently denied the offences. In my opinion, she will continue to deny them. So we might never get that answer, said the prosecutor. Our goal was to explain what happened to the families. But one thing we weren't able to do was explain why. That is really challenging to do as a police officer. On a human level, everyone tries to understand why and suggests that there must be something in her past or that has happened to her that has led to these crimes. But the fact that we haven't discovered anything that would provide a reason why, in my opinion, makes this even more startling. She said, I'm not sure anything explains these atrocities, and I'm not sure there is anything we could have discovered that would have led me to understand why she did it, because it's so inconceivable. Psychologists will ponder the depths that compelled Lucy Letby to secretly kill and injure a string of helpless newborns on a neonatal ward for decades. She had the appearance of being completely innocent a plain, single lady who went out to salsa parties with her friends, and then went home to a suburban semi where she kept cuddly toys in the Disney style on her bed, and slept under a blanket with the equally innocent motif sweet dreams. But it seems that she went to work as a nurse at the Countess of Chester Hospital every day with the intention of causing the very newborns she was meant to be caring for unspeakable misery. Because neither the friends she worked with nor the parents of her victims could even consider the possibility that a newborn nurse would be a serial murderer. She was able to do so in plain sight, while yet feeling safe from ever being exposed. She was attempting to take advantage of whatever chance she had to hurt the infants, while the physicians and nurses around her were doing their utmost to save them. She developed into such a skilled murderer that she frequently made excuses for her actions. She may have done this by fabricating paperwork or by fabricating a story in WhatsApp and Facebook chats so that, in the event that a baby passed out, she would have something to blame. Everyone was vulnerable to her ruthless treachery, not her closest buddy, a nurse from the same unit, not even the married man registrant with whom she allegedly had a crush. They were there to be naively orchestrated, just like everyone else in her circle, as she set about playing God with the lives of infants who were so little they could fit inside the palm of her hand. When she was discovered, she had already murdered seven of them and attempted to murder another seven. Tragically, there are children, now around the ages of seven or eight, who are survivors but will require constant care for the rest of their lives. Naturally, she denied it, just like she denied everything else. But there were hints throughout the trial that she enjoyed her attacks in a disgusting way. She enjoyed the excitement of having brought the infant's collapse, whether they lived or died. A bonus was if she could assist grieving parents by putting together a memory box for them, complete with the baby's hand and footprints, a picture of two deceased twins displayed in a Moses basket and a sympathy note delivered in time for the burial. Letby is so despised by the detectives who oversaw the case that they will never make the effort to communicate with her. They want the infants and their parents to be at the forefront of families' minds throughout the world. Even as she begins her life in jail, the silent thinking is not Letby, never Letby, a Lucy Letby is a narcissist. Just like the serial killer Harold Shipman two decades before, Shipman, a doctor from Hyde in Greater Manchester, would inject his victims with diamorphine, say it them down, and then watch them gently die in his presence. The prosecution is certain that Letby was excited by the suffering she inflicted and the manner she was able to control the innocent participants in her vile, twisted theater, both adults and children. In Chester, where she identified herself as a dedicated nurse, or Hereford, where she was raised in a quiet cul-de-sac and attended the local sixth form college, Letby, now 33, would have been simple to miss in a throng. She embarked on a placement at the neighborhood hospital while finishing her three-year nursing degree at Chester University. 
here is where she would ultimately kill or maim her victims. Additionally, she occasionally worked at Liverpool Women's Hospital, which is currently the main focus of the continuing inquiry into her heinous actions. Her 2016 journal, a childish tone with a cute puppy photo on the front cover and floral doodling inside, reveals how busy she was all the time. There were mentions of the lengthy shifts she enjoyed working because she so wanted to help, the salsa lessons she enjoyed taking with her pals, or other activities like eating at Las Iguanas and then having late-night drinks at the Cuckoo Pub in Chester.